Hello and welcome dear viewers to the video on resolution method development key considerations. So in this video we are going to see what are the important aspects to be considered for resolution method development and mainly in this video we are going to understand about the resolution method development for oral formulations. These key considerations you can apply to other formulations also like semi-solids or parenteral formulation dissolution or transdermal formulations. So these are some very very important and key considerations whenever you are going to develop a dissolution method. See, dissolution method development requires proper planning and proper execution data generation so that your method will be robust reproducible complying to the regulatory requirements and reflective of the in vivo conditions also develop such a dissolution method such parameters and specifications so that you will not receive the frequent regulatory queries. So let's start with the video with the key considerations. So whenever you are working on to the dissolution method development, first is selection of the apparatus. Whether you are going to use the USP1 apparatus or two apparatus. So these two apparatus are the very common basket and paddle. Sometimes apparatus 3 and 4 are also used depending on to the formulation. So basket apparatus is used for tablets and capsules. If you are working on to the extended release type of formulations, that time <coughs> mainly basket apparatus is used and pedal apparatus is used for the tablets and capsules more frequently compared to the USP1. These two apparatus are generally used for immediate release, extended release, controlled release, delayed release type of formulations. <coughs> apparatus 2 is also used for oral suspensions and other formulations. So second is media selection. Choose the medium that reflects the physiological pH and composition of the GI fluids. Select media on the basis of formulation design whether it is IR or ER. Also consider the API PK, API solubility, API stability and the site of absorption of the API. Then come to the RPM selection or agitation selection. So RPM and agitation is for USP 1 and 2 and it is called as dips per minute for USP 3 apparatus. Generally for basket 100 rpm is used and for paddle 25 rpm to 100 rpm is used based on to the formulation. See rpm should be such that you get the consistent release. You get the RHD in the range or within the defined range. Then selection of the suitable filter and its validation. It is very important to check which filter is suitable, which filter is compatible and the filter validation. Then is the sampling time points as per formulation design. So if you are working on to the immediate release type of formulations, 
that time generally while developing a dissolution method you need a dissolution profile let's say for time points for 5 minute 10 minute 15 minute 20 minute 30 minute 45 minutes and 60 minutes and if the molecule is insoluble and if it is not releasing uh, the api above 80% in the 60 minute then you can go for more than 60 minutes then selection of the time points for extended release type of formulations and delayed release type of formulations needs to be studied in detail and the time point selection should also be done as per the literature as per the dissolution database if the dissolution database gives you some idea about the time points usp database is there and ogd database is there to refer monographs can be referred if the formulation is pharmacopoeia then acceptance criteria so acceptance criteria of the formulation depends on to the formulation design bioavailability and bioequivalence studies and in vitro in vivo correlations then coming to the next point that is discriminatory ability or power so specifications and the method should be discriminatory for critical material attributes critical processing parameters and stability other points can also be considered solubility of the drug substance in the media media volume and the sink condition so sink condition is required and if sink condition is not getting achieved that time you can go for use of the surfactants and if still the sink conditions are not achieved that time you can also use non sink conditions but you will need a strong justification for non sink condition for dissolutions and you need to justify the discriminatory ability of the method or discriminatory ability of the dissolution with non sink conditions as well then stability of the drug substance in the selected media it is very important that drug should not get degraded in the media because if it is getting degraded then you will have the variations in the results then degassing requirements whether it is required to degas the media or not generally if surfactants are used that time degassing use the problem sometimes surfactants if used in the media then foaming issues are there so these are required to be taken into consideration then 13th number point is method validation so dissolution method validation is to be done for proving the specificity these are the parameters which are required to be validated the validation parameters are specificity linearity accuracy precision repeatability and robustness so these are the key considerations then coming to the next important consideration biorelevance and iv ivc whichever the dissolution method is developed it should have biorelevance and it should give the good in vitro in vivo correlation so the method should reflect the in vivo dissolution conditions so that you can predict the formulation behavior in the human body then 15 number point is compliance to regulatory requirements guidelines and monographs when you are working on to the dissolution method development always check the pharmacopias always check the pharmacopial forum always check the literature 
because many of the times the dissolution methods get updated or new dissolution methods get into the pharmacopias or pharmacopia monographs become official so that you should be very uh, much ready to have literature search whenever you are working on to the resolution method development resolution method development and dissolution method should comply to the monographs comply to the guidelines and to the regulatory requirements always have good understanding about the guidelines for dissolution method development then another point is dissolution method and specification to be product specific and science based the specifications are derived from the da data or bioequivalence data then stability data data of the qbd batches and the data generated for the meaningful variations in the formulation for example if you are working on to the pcs class 2 or 4 apis that time it is must to understand that api phd will have impact on to the dissolution parameters on to the dissolution rate and that's why always include the effect of api particle size into your product development report and also into your dissolution method development report dissolution is a product specific and it is required to be have science and justification behind the development also consider that the dissolution method whatever is developed into the r&d should be easy to transfer to the qc lab so that you can avoid the qc method transfer failures remember always that whenever you are going to finalize something data is required data is also required for justification only theoretical justification cannot be acceptable to the regulatory authorities so by addressing the key considerations you can ensure that the dissolution method is well optimized and suitable for the quality control and batch release into the market then each formulation is unique and it requires specific dissolution method and specific dissolution specifications each formulation sometime requires the unique requirements and adjustment but this video is for providing you the information for key considerations for dissolution development i hope you might have got the good understanding from this video and i thank you for your response i request you to please do like share and subscribe to pharma learning in depth channel thank you